I think we're about ready, right? Are we sure ready? All right. Uh, people, like, people like to start on time, but uh, as uh, Bruce Isaacs, Isaacs said, uh, here we don't uh, have the trains run on time necessarily, especially in San Francisco. So uh, I want to welcome everybody to the Beat Museum. Uh, are some of you here for the first time? Any first timers or have you been here before? Uh, great. Well, keep coming back. Um, we're here seven days a week, 10 to 7. You can also visit us online at Kerouac.com. You can get on our email list and find out uh, about the events we do here. We do events uh, every month. Uh, we just did a labor fest of, um, event uh, a few weeks back. We got uh, 100,000 poets for change. Michael Rothenberg's uh, event, uh, annual event is, ha is happening in September. So. Uh, Get online with us, get on, get on our email list. We don't send out too many emails. Uh, tonight we're here to celebrate, celebrate Jack Micheline. We've got a bust of Jack right over here, and that bust was done by uh, Linda King, Bukowski's uh, uh, partner for a few years. They had many fights. <laughs> you can imagine with Charles Bukowski. Um, but, uh, we got a new book out. There's been, a, you know, Jack was prolific in his own way. He's considered a street poet, a poet of the streets, and uh, he loved the down and outers, the downtrodden. Uh, the last book before Cocky Moon came out through Zeitgeist here, and we're going to hear more about this. The last book, 20 years ago, uh, Matt Gonzalez put put together a book called 67 uh, Poems for the Downtrodden. And that's an equally downtrodden saints. Down, downtrodden saints, exactly. Great. So, uh, and we have copies of that, but we have plenty of copies of Cocky Moon here tonight. We got uh, both the publisher Bruce Isaacs here. We have um, the editor William Taylor Jr., who's a poet in his own right, many books. I know a lot of you know Billy Taylor. <laughs> All right. So, what else do I want to say? You know. For me, Jack's Michelin's lineage goes back to Whitman in a certain way. Whitman traveled the country and saw the Civil War, went to New Orleans, and uh, and Jack Michelin, being born in the Bronx, uh, he picked up uh, uh, from there and uh, traveled and was in Europe and uh, Mexico and uh, finally came west. I think his two favorite parts of the city was North Beach. He spent a fair amount of time here. And then later, he, uh, he was out in the Mission District, and uh, he lived out there. I remember on Valencia, and he used to hang out, and he did a great art piece of artwork, uh, which we have part of it downstairs at the Abandoned Planet uh, bookshop was amazing. on Valencia. And then, of course, Adobe was his home as well. So Jack got around. So um, we've got quite a few poets here tonight, and uh, we're going to read and some remembrance of Jack. So I think we'll jump right into it, and I'd like to introduce the publisher of Zeitgeist Press, Mr. Bruce Isaacson, a poet as well. I find this slideshow distracting. So I'm really pleased to see so many wonderful poets and writers and lovers of poetry come out to see the book, the first book in many years for Jack Micheline, of uh, Jack Micheline's. Yeah, Jack, Jack was, uh, Jack is an American original. He was an American original for sure, 100%. Uh, we wrote on the back that we think that uh, that I think Jack was the greatest street poet of the 20th century, certainly in English, uh, and uh, and his work has a way of searing into you and and staying with you, um, lo these many years. Jack was great with titles of his books. The two books that he did with us during during his life, Imaginary Conversation with Jack Kerouac and Outlaw of the Lowest Planet, 
I, I love the titles. Unfortunately, he wasn't here to come up with the title for us, but we did use the title of one of his poems, Cocky Moon, and that's the title of the book. So this is the book. There's a pile of them over there. And what we're really going to do is just celebrate uh, Jack's work. We're going to hear a lot of poems by Jack and some poems by other poets kind of in the tradition of Jack Micheline. And I want everybody to feel comfortable like get in and get a seat. I know we're kind of, there's not a lot of room to move around, but just get up and move around as we need to. So here we go. So the first, so we're going to have great, we really have great poets on the list tonight. And I'm really excited about it. The first poet, uh, Pump, really was, I, I'm indebted to him because what he did with Second Coming Press was really in many ways kind of a model for us with Zeitgeist. I don't think, perhaps there wouldn't have been a Zeitgeist Press if Second Coming hadn't done. I know that uh, he did several books of Jack's, including uh, including the prose book, uh, Skinny Thank you, Skinny Dynamite, which has got Jack's wonderful stories in it. It's a great read. I don't know if they have any here or not, but it's a great book. And uh, he's going to read for us from Jack's work. So let's welcome A.D. Winans. in the uh, 60s and uh, published his uh, poetry book, Glass House of America in the 70s, and Skinny Dynamite in 1980, which was first published in German. Uh, Jack was, to me, the last of the street poets. I think when he died, uh, that term died along with him. I think some people here would agree with that. In my 55 years uh, plus on poetry, uh, I consider Jack one of the best oral poets that I've uh, come across. I went to so many of his, his readings. He could identify with just any crowd, young, old, in between. I remember once going to the Northeast Mental Health Center in the Tenderloin with him where he read to a group of young, mentally challenged uh, young men and women. And, uh, he just had rapport with him from the very first, first moment. It was a beautiful thing to watch. On the other side of the coin, he could be brash and outrageous at times, which only endeared him more to me. But um, I remember one particular occasion, uh, we were drinking uh, all day at the uh, saloon in North Beach. And uh, it was starting to get dark, and he leaned over and he said, uh, they're having an AA meeting in Chinatown. Let's go. <laughs> Could you speak closer to the mic? Because some people in the back can't hear. And I, pardon? Speak closer to the mic because some people in the back can't hear. Well, I get much more closer than I am. I'm almost kissing. We have a fan going on back here. I, well, I'm sorry. I can't get any closer than that. I've almost got my lips on it. Kiss the mic. Uh, <laughs> So where was I? Oh yeah, we were at, so I said, why would I want to go to an AA meeting in Chinatown? And he said, well, it's a great place to score with women. So, so we went to um, the AA meeting, it was my first one, and I got up and I said, my name's Al Wynans, I don't know if I'm an alcoholic or not. And then Jack got up and very loudly, pro this was during the Vietnam War, and he got up and very loudly proclaimed, My name's Jack Micheline, I'm a poet, and if you people were serious, you'd be out bombing distilleries instead of napalming women and children. <laughs> and that obviously didn't go over that well. <laughs> so the only thing we scored that night was uh, some sugar cookies, which I'm not particularly fond of. I could go on and on, but we don't have the time. We've got so many poets and a limited amount of time. So before I get to his two poems, I'd like to read a brief passage from a letter that Charles Bukowski wrote me uh, concerning Jack. And Bukowski and I were friends for 17 years. He wrote me about, or we wrote, 18, maybe 80 letters. And a lot of them had content from, about Jack. So this is a passage from one of the letters. 
Mitchellian is all right. He's one third bullshit, but he's got a special divinity and a special strength. He's got a little bit too much poet sign posted on his forehead, but he says good things in speech and poems, power, power flame, laughing things. I like his poems. I like the way they roll and flow. Jack loves the sun and pussy and the horse and the streets and the common people. His poems are total feelings beating their heads on barroom floors. I can't think of another poet who has more and who has been neglected more. Jack is the last of the holy preachers sailing down Broadway singing the song. Then you can no, no, that, that didn't conclude it. This concludes it. He's right. They'll find him after he's dead. He's fought hard, Al, sleeping on people's rugs, playing the clown for a night's sleep, a piece of stale bacon. But going back over all the people I've ever known, he comes closer to the utmost divinity, the soothsayer, the gambler, the burner of the stinking buckskin, than any man I've ever known. A little more of that letter can be found in Mac Gonzalez's book, because I, I didn't use the whole letter. I'd like to read two poems from the book from Jack's in the late 1950s. The first one he wrote, uh, Jenny Lee was a uh, street poem about an addict who died in the street. He wrote it in Harlem, 1959. And the second poem, uh, Ballad of Benny Rhodes, was written a year earlier. So, Jenny Lee. Jenny Lee, you never had a chance, Jenny Lee. Standing on a corner in the belly of Harlem, and the horns were blowing crazy, Jenny Lee. Shaking as a monkey has its way, your veins balls like rivers. Mad dogs are always biting, the needle hard as iron, Jenny Lee. You were 15 when you started, just earth and dogs and saliva come. Hard rock, black ca cat, red bird, Jenny Lee. You never had a chance, Jenny Lee. Scream and shake and vomit green, the horns are always blowing. Your guts cut out at 20, no black Jesus on a cross of neon. Preachers still wailing, blue balls on the corner, Jenny Lee. You're born and you die, no sweet ride for you, baby. The monkeys always jumping, all the faces of angels. No more walking Easter Sunday, no more turkey trimmings, baby. No more five-star rot gut sour whiskey, Jenny Lee. A sky full of flowers, a yellow moon for you. Jenny died on the corner where all the voices were. The horns were blowing crazy. A siren wailed in the night. Your body wrapped in flowers in the gutter of the sky. Out in the open, out in the street, heaven in your eyes, Jenny Lee. Okay, I'll close with the Ballad of Benny Rhodes. A bird, a bone, a glass of champagne. They found him in back of the track, singing a song on a lonely street singing the blues in the night. They booked Benny Rhodes on a vagabond charge. They gave him a number as he went through the mill, number 65943. San Francisco's a hell of a town for vagabond cats like me. They took him to court in front of a judge, a self-righteous judge was he. What's your plea, yelled the fiery judge. And a self-righteous judge was he. I am what I am. I am myself. Benny Rhodes, my name, that's me. Twenty days, yelled the judge. You son of a twenty days in the county jail. Kneel to the power, kneel to the cross. Faces of judges, badges of men. 
They drag Benny Rhodes to the back of the room. We'll fix your wagon, Benny Rhodes. And they beat him bloody with lead belly clubs, number 65943. They threw Benny in a cell of hell with seven other men in a tiny cell. He spit and he coughed the blood of his soul, number 65943. They yelled for the jailer, they yelled for the guards, but nobody came in the night. The blood of his soul was spilt on the floor. When daylight came and the light did shine, they opened the cell, it was quiet as hell. Benny Rhodes lay dead in a mass of red, number 65943. Faces of judges, badges of men, kneel to the power, kneel to the cross, a bird, a bone, a glass of champagne. Benny Rhodes lies dead in an unmarked grave, number 65943. Thank you. Did Matt, did Matt make it? Do we see Matt Gonzalez here? No. Not yet. Okay. So we're going to go forward. Here we go. So uh, <clears throat> the idea behind this book for us was to put in one place the poems that Jack was known, that we knew Jack by in the mission in the 1980s, where he had such a huge impact on us all, just by being there, and you'd go in to the to the Cafe Babar, and he would say, when he'd favor us with a reading, and he'd go in, and you just let that voice wash over you, and that's really, for us, I think, or for me at least, the genesis behind, behind this book, aside from in addition to the promises we made to Jack to keep his work in print, because his work is great work. Uh, I want to especially thank Vince Silver, by the way, who gave us permission to do that, and wanted to be here, and did a lot to get a lot of you here. So, uh, our next poet actually is the editor, edited this book for us, and I don't think it would have happened. We, I had this on the list, and I'll tell you, if he hadn't done such a good job, I don't think the book would have happened otherwise. So, give thanks to William Taylor, Jr. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Um, I was really excited when Bruce asked me to do this. Um, I believe it was um, at Beast Crawl. At some point, we were talking and drinking beers, and so like, hey, I'm looking for someone to maybe, you know, get this idea of their, uh, for a Michelin book. And I'm like, yeah, me. And um, I, I've been a fan of uh, Jack's for a long time. I never got to meet him. You know, he, he had passed before I moved to the Bay Area, but I've been a big fan of his work for a long time, and I tried to just collect. Um, you know, uh, a lot of his poems that were immediately, I thought, accessible, and then also I tried to capture some of his different styles, you know, some of his more longer rambling ones, some of his shorter ones, more lyrical ones, so I tried to make the book like a nice primer, you know, if, you know, for younger people. It's here, it's in print, it's available, people that aren't familiar with his work can hopefully discover him. So I'm just going to read a few, a short one and then a medium-sized one. Called uh, Summer Evening in Harlem. You hear the voices singing, you hear the horn that cries. Sophie got a headache, Arnold, he done died. Most people, they just walking, some going for a ride. Stoops full of dreamers, bar rooms full of lies. That dollar bill done got us till the day we die. Lord's coming, preacher Willie says. Lord's coming pretty soon. Still the voices singing. Still the horn that cries. Sophie got a headache. Arnold, he done died. That dollar bill done got us till the day we die. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a poem written on a Hollywood back street Sunday morning. The clothesline in the backyard waves in the light rain. Nine birds sing on the telephone wires. I love and I hate, so intertwined in my foggy brain. 
I have traveled too much, drank too much, dreamt too much, sang too much, love not enough. I have not been trained to kill, nor do I kneel to my contemporaries. Nobody owes me anything, nor can I write love letters. Man will never be big enough, brave enough, humble enough. He is a frightened nerve at the end of a stick. He is forever hungry, lost, frightened soul. Love me, he says, the poor bastard. I am Federico Garcia Lorca, Francois Villon, Charles Baudelaire, Marquis de Sade. I'm a boxer in the ninth round, a horse in the stretch, a naked man howling at the sky, a poor poet dreaming of suicide, an anarchist making bombs. My bombs are poems that cut at eyesores. I've been imprisoned by a mad dream. The flowers say hello. So does the dog and sky. Even the rain that comes down on my head blesses my heart. I have been paid off by my gift of poetry, the heat of creation. Hey world, I give you beauty, anger, madness, a wild dance. Some poems written on scrap paper. Hey world, I got light in my brain. Hey world, I want to sell light. Sell light, man? What, are you crazy or something? Who's going to buy light? You're no electrician. You gotta write dirty stories about cunt and sex maniacs. About guys who jerk off and carry shit in paper bags. You gotta write about hang-ups, losers, touts, nymphomaniacs. No, no, no. I look up at the sky, the birds have gone, flown away. An ambulance races down Vine Street, my pants are ripped, I got a sore ass. I'm gonna write Carl and tell him I love him. And Bob and Charlie and Harold and Sam. Tell him all I love him. Fuck the suicide, it's too dramatic. I'm gonna learn how to write love poems. Yes, 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 yes. She's one of the one of the most exciting young poets that I've heard in the in the in the Bay Area, and and, uh, and so I'm without waiting. I'm just pleased to introduce Cassandra Dallin. Thank you so much, Bruce. Thanks for having me, Beat Museum. Uh, everybody, it's great to see you. Um, I will dive in um, to. Uh, read one of Jack's poems in this beautiful book called A Look Back at My Youth. A highway crosses the playground of my childhood. The shoemaker is still on Archer Street, the druggist. The same faces inhabit the wilderness of the Bronx, its superstitions, its narrow minds. The synagogue of old Hebrews, the church of black cloth Catholics, its Irish sons with yellow ties. The football field is still there. Night descends over the houses. Willie the mad Russian, where are you? Too low, carrying ten men over the goal line. Lost junkie after the cheers died away. Wild Murray, where are you? Joey Cohen, pimples on your face, where are you? Little A.B., do you laugh that loud anymore? I wonder. Voices of the children playing in the park. The boathouse is deserted. The grass is still green in October. Night is descending over the Bronx. The wilderness is but a memory. The Ritz movie is long gone. The whores have all moved away. It is time to go on. Time moves so quickly. My mother still prays nightly. I used to play hooky and go to Bronx Park and look at the lovers in the grass. The leaves are red and brown and green now. Water flows down the falls of the Bronx River. So I was just a punk kid when Jack was reading at Cafe a bar running around this neighborhood. Um, and this is my dear San Francisco. Look, this breakup is hard for me too. 
It's, I'd like to remember the good times before you were a white bread racist elite bastard, before you treated your poor like trash, pushing them into dark shit crusted corners, sweeping us across the bridge, underground, out of sight. San Francisco, sorry, we're not techy enough to pay $3,000 a month to sleep in a closet. We're not Uber Lyft getting picked up on Google Bus, can't pay $15 for a plate of gluten-free salad. Dear San Francisco, I remember your railroad flats flooded with sun, artists, writers, painters, musicians, how we made our furniture from a few crates and a board we loved home with the late night transfer. We didn't shop at Pottery Barn, we didn't even have stores like that. We picked our produce up from the Grey Panther's garage, bought falafel and beans with food stamps at the cheese store, shared 40s on hate, a burrito at Chabela's fed three of us. Nights under Dota's nipples, blinking Broadway lights, we were part of the mishmash, punks and headbangers, sailors and lowriders, the Palladium re releasing Michael Jackson, red leathers, zippered jackets, and California curl next to the lusty lady, a first job for many. By the 15 third, stealing Bukowski from City Lights, my first job was at the Savoy Tivoli, Late night pizza slices for one dollar and some hot noodle soup next afternoon with Vietnamese coffee dripping sweet into condensed milk. San Francisco, you were my first love. I came at 13, knew I'd found home, came back every time I tried to leave you. San Francisco, I hate you, but who cares anyway? I can't afford the toll to get into your punk ass these days, and no one lives here, there, but a bunch of assholes like you. I'm sorry, I still love you. Been in Oakland many years now. Um, and the other one I'm going to read from Jack is Dollar Bill, which I find so, so relevant still also. Dollar Bill, they'll break your heart and break your soul and say it's love, that Dollar Bill. That Dollar Bill done killed the boys in Demonera, Rockland, Garden State. Done killed thousands, boys, in all the wars of time. That Dollar Bill ain't Buffalo Bill, ain't Lincoln, Madison, Jefferson. George General Washington's face, that dollar bill ain't love. Ain't love at all, no sir, that dollar bill buys cherry pie thighs and Vaseline, can buy the lust and pussy of your dreams, buys people sarsaparilla and all the blowing wind upon your mind. The two-faced bill is tough and mean if you ain't got that dollar bill. Forget it, babe, forget it, Bill. You're down and broke. All the cats are howling in the sky. If you ain't got that dollar bill, that piece of paper printed on the page, you're a dog and a king and a priceless wonder. You're a thief, butcher, bartender, shoemaker, dishwasher, waiter, pimp. Ha 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 ha. You ain't got that dollar bill. They'll break your heart and break your will. You ain't got that dollar bill. Forget it, babe. Forget it, Bill. You ain't got that dollar bill. You ain't got it. That's all. <laughs> um, this also is from my upcoming book, Collapse. Jihad live tweet. People are getting stupider, angrier, my face lynch mobbers coming out of the woodwork, typing their idiocy into the stratosphere, coming stewed up and strapped up to a Ferguson near you. Face flags and fake news, a reality show called Election. War said the world is a ghetto. Malcolm said the chickens would come home to roost. Push so long, they'll show up on your doorstep, wolves on their heels. This world is a scary place. It ain't virtual, but it is playing out on a PlayStation near you. All those Call of Duty games make good marksmen. If the pretty girls don't want to fuck you, boot up, mask up, arm yourself, shoot them. Shoot them because they got more pussy, or they have pussies, or they called you a pussy. Shoot them because they wouldn't give you any, all blonde and carefree, all full of food, sex, and death metal. They too bought a dream on a television set built in a prison, beamed it out to a bulldozed village, sold the bulldozer and the bomb to the dictator who replaced your heroes and unions with Blackwater Walmart factories, replaced your schools and yards with rubble. They will not welcome you to their land of the free. They will send contractors to make more money off you while you climb from under the wreckage they dropped on you. So much ammunition. When you tripped and fell, they accused you of strapping the bomb to your belly. Thing is, you never even left East Oakland, and they had a story about a replica pistol awfully fast. I'm starting to realize the whole world is a ghetto, and the chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> Cassandra Dallet, by the way, come out and hear Cassandra Dallet if you're in the East Bay on Sunday afternoon at Diesel Books at 3 o'clock. Uh, she and I are doing a reading over there, and we'd love to see you there. Uh, let's see, Bruce.
Oh, okay. I'm not in a hurry. Okay, okay, well. But are you ready? Is it if I hear Jack? If I call your name. Well, Jack's coming up. He's, he's coming up. I tell you what, well, how about I, we'll do Richard and then Matt and then Jack. How's that? Perfect. So, okay, perfect. So, uh, our next poet, Richard Loringer, is a Zeitgeist poet, amongst other things. So, he's got a Zeitgeist book. We're proud to have him. He's, you know, Richard Loringer does a lot to help people. And he's an excellent poet, and we're glad to have him. Thank Woo! you, Richard. Oh my God! It's got Dave Cooties. <laughs> One sec, I forgot my water. Thanks. Thanks for having. Um, I was going through and just picking out my favorites, <laughs> and I've chosen two to read. So I'm just going to read a couple of Jack's poems, to the best of my ability. <clears throat> Walking in Kerouac's shadow, the alabaster city gleams in the sunlight. I am on a bus going to Santa Rosa, away from the stinking hotel. They tell me I am famous, like the Jerome cookies. <laughs> Streets, poems, nut houses, jails, paintings, con men, and time. My 20 years of poems and paintings stored away in houses and cellars, relentless with anger and love. I, I, I ponder at life and the world around me. The bus speeds on the highway going 60. I am 52, live alone, considered some mad freak genius. In reality, I am a fucked up poet who will never come to terms with the world. No matter how beautiful the flowers grow, no matter how children smile, no matter how blue is the bluest sky, the harsh realities of life, that, that life is mostly a put-up job, the genius rain avoids us, the lone, solitary soul that does her beautiful dance for all to see. I seek the genuine leaf blowing in the wind, the real person tapping, a song whose melody flows through rivers and time, the image that dances with stars, the sun that melts anger and harassment, years spent begging and hustling, carrying paintings on buses, carrying mattresses through streets, evictions, lost loves, hangovers, rheumatism, hemorrhoids, for a muse that rarely pays off. I must be mad, bewitched like a lost gambler down to my last bet with no car fare or candy. I am not subtle or charming. I cannot lie for money or tell stories. I am the gray fox, some schmuck, all pro chasing the mad dream, the crazy Jew himself. We don't know when to quit. We can't say die unless I die. It's all a mad dream, the racetrack full of maniacs, lost gamblers living on hope and dreams. Tomorrow is never better. The same buses full of beaten and tired faces. I only know when the cock rises and the crow howls to eat, to drink, to take a leak. And chicken is good to eat when one is hungry. Money buys everybody. That's why the world is fucked up. That's why politicians have 17 faces and speechwriters and waitresses wear lipstick. Why mediocrity rules. Why poets hang out in groups for protection. <laughs> and musicians disappear faster than flies. And artists suck the rich quicker than summer watermelon and bourgeois children. Why the communists and capitalists use the same deck of tricks to hide the miraculous, the magic of life. The wonder of children and salamanders and birds. Wonder is the thunder. Wonder is the spring rain itself. Wonder is the young girl in love. Wonder is love. The concerto, the hummingbird, the clouds moving across the night sky. It is raining again, light against darkness, shadows chasing the sun, the sun chasing the shadows. Man against the night. Man and women together with the night. The day awakens. Let's sing a song. For those who chase the night, for those who dance with light, one speck of light, no matter who is light, light the unknown, the unknown 
It is all we have. Anything is possible, like newborn colors flashing across the universe. The road, the vagabond, the dreamers, the dancers, the unsung, fuck the gung-ho. Byron Hunt is doing a collage at the Goodman Building. <laughs> Balchowski is doing another painting, raising one arm, his one arm to the sky. Rosalie Sorrells is singing a song in Kansas. Sam Shepard is smiling. Rare birds are coming out with new coats of color. Rainy Cass is alive and well in New Orleans. Valentin Chusikov is sketching some blonde in Jackson Square. Bodenheim <laughs> hustling another poem for wine. Franz Klein singing a sad song at the Cedar. Kerouac talking to the moon again. James T. Farrell chasing a waitress at Yankee Stadium. Charles Ming is bopping, chucking, eating a steak, playing bass with angels. Wilbur Ware, Gil Gawkins, Bill Basio, Charlie Stock. Star, Sue McGraw, Linda, Charlotte, Banana Boat, Steamboat Jones, Jeremiah, Jerusalem. The light is coming out. It'll give the, I'll give the sun away. It belongs to everybody. It's not mine to give away. Those with the sun, those seeking the sun, those on the run in the Chicago night, those in jail, those in the towers, those chasing a ghost in the wilderness, those on the roads, those with dreams, those who will never give up, those who are learning to dance, those perplexed, agonized, whacked, wretched, tattooed, confused. We are all the sun. You are the sun. The world is one. Those with wonder, you are the sun. Shake the sun. We are one. The moon and the sun are brothers. I like this because it's about a reading, among other things. <laughs> Berkeley. Nine of the Crooked Moon. The houses are still, only the crooked moon to bring home to my bedside. Six pair of eyes, three mouths on a stage in April, two scrub women cleaning house, and a delicate flower left in our civilization to tell the history of America in the 80s in a safe, quaint bar on Telegraph Avenue. All the gurus and institutions of learning have beshunned these tender voices. Shame on this nation. Shame on the teachers of the so-called learned institutions where fear and self-pity are allies of sorrow. The multitudes buried in dung and mediocrity and material gratification and intellectual sterility. Shame on America. Only the crooked moon smiles down on its children. Let wonder be graced with kindness. Cruel is this world of engines and churches. Some solitary being walks alone, naked alone with strangers. It steps up, it steps like birds, uplifting flight, blessed with sorrow. The known burden of our souls, hidden in the darkest corners. Uplift that dream that a child's sly smile redeems. The water of skies and waterfalls. It is here in this habitation called Earth. We celebrate being tonight. To be with one sound. Ear and eye is blessed discovery of being. Shed that cold cover of words. The false hypocrisy. And bring to me the treasure of dreams and waterfalls. Tonight, under the crooked moon, we celebrate the light of being. I, ear, wings of, do of wings of doves, doves, wretched reality of circumstance, shattered fantasy, and stop the clocks when we love, the wind rises forever. Even the dwarf and the cripple will dance tonight. It is written in the sky above the crooked moon. The arm, eye, ear, and heart move with the pen. The lemon stirs in the water. To you who come here tonight, we celebrate life. Absolutely, we celebrate life. Our next reader did something that makes me really happy, which is he published an incredible, beautiful book of Jack's, and he did it while Jack was here to really enjoy it and to get the acknowledgement and appreciation from such a wonderful book. And I want to tell you something else about this book, 67 Poems of Downtrodden Saints, which is 
that I have to. Now I've been reading Jack's poems. He'd been sent. He'd send me po He sent me poems when I was in Russia. He sent me stuff when I was in. He sent me all kinds of different things. But I'll tell you, when this book came out, I had not read one. I don't think I'd read one of the poems in it. And it's a fabulous book. But anyhow, so we're grateful to have Matt Gonzalez here with us, uh, who did that, and he's going to come up and read some. Read for us, right? To the microphone, please. Such a great uh, addition. When I did uh, the book that I put together, I very much was trying to find poems that hadn't been published before. You succeeded. And it was sort of a different project, but uh, I'll give you one story. I, I had this poem I thought was really quite good. It was, I had it both in a handwritten version on an envelope, a yellow envelope, and a typewritten uh, uh, version with maybe one letter was off, uh, one word was plural in one versus the other, and uh, the typewritten version had holes in it, uh, I don't know if it was cigarette butts or something, and I showed it to Jack and he denied that he had written this poem, <laughs> and I said, but it's a good poem, Jack, I mean, and I had to show it to him in his own handwriting before he said, yeah, yeah, I guess that is my handwriting. <laughs> So, but he didn't like it, and a couple of days later, he says, uh, he says, uh, hey, Matt, do you have a copy of that poem? I said, I thought you didn't like it. He's like, I got a reading. I want to read that poem. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's certain advantages to putting together a book when the author is not alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> License. <laughs> poem that Jack uh, is very well known for, Poet of the Streets. Oops. He, uh, uh, he was about 30 years old um, when this poem was published. And at the end of it, it, it stated January 31st, 1960, East Bleaker. He says, this poem turned the tide of my death written on First Avenue off the Bowery in an alley of great souls. Poet of the Streets. I walk east of Bleecker. The sky is blue on this Sunday evening. There is something deeper than the earth. There is something deeper than the stone cities. There is something deeper than our existence, than all the robes of power. Power in the night, bleeding gutters with crutches. Power in the night, in the neon vibrating. The night in 30 moons and sharpies. The night in the railroad yards gleaming. The night in the sky. The night in billboards in darkness across a nation's skeletons and machinery, jaundice joints in lips of connivers, burnt Christmas trees, jazz horns and drummers, above concrete, above whimpering voices, above calculators, writers with tokens in their hands, writers to the sea, a nation of cowards, cowards wrapped in academic cloth, over all in darkness, over all who live in deserts, over all shells covering, over all that are wasted, bearing all in nothingness, bearing all that is soul, bearing all with layers of armor, bearing herds with still voices, bearing all in the nowhere of silence. Herring and fish in cans, turkey and chicken in cans, humans in cells of unknowing, there is more to life than the lights of savage civilizations. There is more to life than all the words spoken. There is more to life than the eye can see. I see the son of angels, hemp and sugar and wheat, blood and sinew within the flesh, ticker tapes, gray hair, jowls on faces, dollars and gods and people sold and traded. People dying for nothing, people selling their minds and bodies, people without courage, people with no teeth in drugstores, death loaded with goods, givers of death and more death, Cranes and deep hookers, cutting shears for the young, newspapers stunting the mind, dollars the spoiler of ships of bananas. I see your faces as I stroll through the cities, the wind touching the faces of whores, the vision of poets encompassing all, songs of children outside the brick houses. 
There is nothing deeper than life in the livers of life. Mankind raped in the bank vaults of steel. Dead soldiers, battlefields surrounded by iron and ironies. A million lost sunsets. A poet unconquered with a legacy of Whitman and Lorca. A poet unconquered by stone, by glass, by greed, by madness. The lights blaze on in the night. Lights in the cold wind. Visions above all death, cows milked dry, golden crosses, the sky blazing with miracles. A poet walks in the cold wind, his head raised humble and unafraid, death around him filled with waste and banners, death all around him, walking alone with birds above the canoe-shaped moons. Sounds are heard and the sky glows in darkness. I am not afraid. Thank you, Matt. You're an angel to our nation of poets. Okay. Thank you. I get to introduce our next poet, who really needs no introduction. <laughs> but I get to do it anyhow. Yeah. Uh, one of my fav absolute fav when I first started hanging around in North Beach in the 1980s. It was all about the three Jacks, Jacks, right? Jack Micheline and our next poet. Let's give a hand for Jack Hirschman. What about the third Jack? Hi, folks. No. Uh -huh. I'm beautiful to hear Jack's word. I'm going to read a couple of poems of Jack from the book, and then I'm going to read the from my book, uh, Front Lines, a, a longish poem that I wrote for Jack. Uh, should know, uh, just a, let me just say that the, there was three poets in the Beat Generation, Sweet Generation, and my old comic generation, that uh, we, were, we were the New Yorkers, Gregory Corso, Jack Micheline, and myself. The others were Woo! all from New Jersey or, or uh, Massachusetts or Kansas. Where was John Meltzer from? David was originally, also, you're right, David was originally from Brooklyn, that's correct, but he came out when he was a child to East L.A., and he was brought up in East L.A. You're right, Matt. David was the other one. Um, I'm going to read a couple of short poems of Jack's. The first one is I think, to me this is the essence of Jack Michelin. Give me just a second. I want to <laughs> clear me specs. Okay. I've been scared too long. I've been scared too long. Too many years on the rocks. My body's been cut in eight pieces. My head is all jumbled up. I drink to forget. Time goes on forever. Maybe I should buy a machine gun and wipe out the middle class. <laughs> no, I should get me a good woman and a good job and go to church on Sunday. Or maybe I should write the great American novel. No, maybe I should buy a parachute and jump. No, I'll just go for a walk and start laughing. The moon is full tonight. I'll talk to the moon and dance with the people in the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> And this is also a lovely poem, and I'm reading it because I also knew Bernie. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was Bernie Aronowitz, and we were in the same uh, hotel. It used to be by the park over in North Beach here. It used to be called the New Riviera when I first came up from, San, uh, from Los Angeles. That's where I lived for a bit. 
It was called hot chicken soup. Bernie walked all over town for special places. Dairy restaurants, kosher restaurants, inexpensive places, places with good soup and bread, places where he could eat a good meal. Bernie liked Vanishkas, Kreplach, fruit salad, pumpernickel, sour rye, blintzes and cream, strawberries, and hot chicken soup. <laughs> when Bernie sat down to eat, it was one of the great acts of his life. <laughs> his eyes lit up like a pinball machine as he chewed, swallowed, and slurped his food down his bagpipe. Bernie walked five miles for a good hot bowl of soup. He was a prince, a hawk, a wild bird. No one enjoyed a meal better than Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie lives! Uh, Jeff, Jeff, did, did, did Mitchell and Reed then on the Conan O'Brien show? Did he? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. I, I, so, uh, I, saw, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Conan asked him what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> When I came to San Francisco, the street was Jack. I write this on the number 19 as it passes the now non-existent donuts and things on Polk and California streets, where during the war we talked of poets here and in the Soviet Union before going to many can over on Fillmore to do our things, or headed to North Beach for the wild venues there. Later, I learned the street was more than Jack. It was Jack, and few of us had much of it. And we saw poor palms opening everywhere. The war had broken many, <laughs> and the rats in power, and the cockroach landlords. Jack lived for the walk, for the open gate inside, where the prisoner hears the strain of Mingus or Monk, and sings free along the storefronts and to the windows of the world. The Bohemian was dead, but he said, long live the Bohemian. The poets were canned or clowned or given microphones to suck on, but he cried, long live the poets. Those he envied and decried for having made it beat in the literary world, he was right about. They really weren't street and street was where the poet had to be, or street would be ruled by dead spores and fascisti. Ah. He had a memory, a bottle of Chianti, a gypsy Jewish fire burning in him all the way back to Black Pushkin. Had the con, the hustle, the scrounge, the wail, to survive in a world where blood money rigged up everybody's sales. All that to keep the gate open inside for the poem to blow as a hurricane, for the paint to animal and child. Old buddy of the word, those guts you kept like a holy ark of sparks bursting into flame, you pass on into all of us now bereft, the hip, the dudes, the chicks, the dames, we ask a doll, we ask a dish, Rambo, Mayakovsky, Kerouac, and all the street hearts gathered here, 
Wasn't that a matzo in the teeth of homeless fate? Wasn't that a poet made of bright and shining tears? stronger than we sometimes think it is and even the world of street poets is stronger than I sometimes think it is and it's still still there and I think our next reader shows us that so our next reader is Julia Vinograd happen like this, but it should have. It's called the Jack Michelin Memorial. There were about 500 people packed into the Jack Michelin Memorial. It was hot, sweaty, stuffy. I went outside to get some air and bumped into Jack Michelin. <laughs> who was complaining. All these people he'd known so long, whenever there was a really big beat bash with food, booze, famous people in the press, he got passed over. <laughs> He had to hear about this one from a drunk in a bar down the street. He'd known Kerouac. He bet he'd known whoever died better than everyone else wearing out the mic. <laughs> well, yeah, I said, and wondered how to go on. Besides, he continued, if he'd known, he could have brought books to sell. It was a big crowd. And he was broker than usual, a trade of painting for a place to crash. He wasn't feeling the cold for some reason, but after all, it was San Francisco. Yeah, I said again. Death hadn't changed him, and there was no way I could tell him. I waited for him to charge the doorway like an aging elephant, swaying his righteous belly and shouting poems in all directions. But he didn't. He just shrugged and grinned at how unfair it all was and headed down a dark alley, maybe back to the drunk who told him about the memorial and hadn't known who it was for. <laughs> Places. It's one of my favorite of his poems. There are hiding places in my room where beautiful poems are hidden. Poems hidden away in boxes on sheets of brown paper. Poems of spirit and magic. Workers' hands hidden in boxes. Beautiful thighs. There are blue skies hidden in my room. Dolphins and seagulls, the heaving of breasts and oceans. There are skies in my room. There are flies in my room. There are streets in my room. There are a thousand nights hidden in boxes. There are drunks in my poems. There are a million stars on the roof of my room, all hidden away in boxes. There are steps down side streets. 
There is a crazed eye of a poet in my room. There is the sunlit morning. There are dancers dancing in my room. There are old Arabs exploring the desert near Escalon. There are sparrows and bluebirds and wildcats in my room. There are elephants and tigers. There are skinny Italian girls in my room. There are letters from Peru and England and Germany and Russia in my room. There are the steps of Odessa in my room, the Volga River in my room. There are dreams in the, the night of my room. There are flowers. There is the dance of affirmation in my room, the steps of young poets carrying knapsacks full of poems. There are the pictures of an exhibition in my room. <coughs> Mozorzovsky and Shagatovich and Charles Mingus in my room. Composers and painters all singing in my room all hidden away in boxes. One night when the moon is full, they will come out and do a dance. Yeah. <laughs> blues for America. Sing blues for America for big trucks chasing the white lines all night in every state on the mirror, hauling heavy wooden boxes mere nailed shut over our eyes. America must not see. America don't look. Sing boogie woogie bug eyed monster on easy to assemble blues for America. Will school children mem memorize the Bill of Rolls? Play spoons for nameless junkies cooking spoons over a candle and America's greasy spoon with name tags Peroxide voitresses call everyone ducky. Will government <laughs> ghosts come to collect our names while chattering waitresses collect our plates? Sing blues for America, high-stepping, highways, fender kissing, jelly belly, traffic jams, blues for America, fast cars, slow roads, leaning on horns, a saxophone plays without pity as pot roast and potatoes drift out of reach. Sing America, drifting out of reach. Sing rusty fire escapes stretched with laundry lines like fiddle st strings, walked on by mangy alley cats and spangled circus acrobats. Listen to laundry late at night. Boxer shorts and bathrobes sing blues for America, leaving us. America, don't go. Drive-in horror movie background music wails blues for America with couples pretending terror in each other's arms, knocking over half-empty popcorn boxes and getting their knees tangled in the gear shift. The twenty-foot screens full of blood and slime, but time stops when they kiss. It's a small town, there are shotgun weddings, but he's not to take his shotgun to war. Oh no, America, oh no. Sing honky tonky bat tacky blues for America. Souvenir postcards of the Grand Canyon with a Holiday Inn address on the back. Give me some more of that old time piano and answer me this. If we drop bombs just as deep all over the world as the Grand Canyon, still a wonder. Will tourists still come with cameras? Will we hear the center of the earth sing to the sky or will we only sing blues for America? Sing blues for a man standing in lines all day and not getting work, coming home angry and throwing a plate at the wall because the food was overcooked. Next week he'll hit her because she doesn't have work, because he doesn't have work, and she's not looking at him, but she might. And he holds her all night to hide from her eyes. America, he thinks it's all his fault. Sing blues for America, the land he loves, the land we love. America, come back. Mm. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, okay. Oh, we need a chair. We have just a couple of more poets left, so, uh, gosh, I just couldn't be more pleased than to see all the people show up for Jack Micheling. Our next poet 
was one of the favorites of the Café Babar, and he's been lived in San Francisco for a long time, and he's been, um, and he's a great writer. So please welcome David West. I didn't know Jack all that well. Um, we did some readings together in the 90s. Um, and I'm going to tell a tacky story about him just because it's funny, but I don't want to denigrate him. I mean, poets who write well about class, that great fart in the room when you talk about American democracy, are rare, particularly these days with the flood of stuff out of MFA programs that never talk about getting addicted or how much you would like to push your boss at the fucking window. They never talk about my life somehow. And Jack would always write poems that was like, yeah, that happened to me. And I got stuck in the car with him for some long car rides. And I've heard some really good stories. If anyone here knows the story of him and Jimmy Hoffa in Chicago in the late 50s, I would like to hear that story again because I remember about 50% of it, given what we were drinking in the car at the time. <laughs> it's a really good story. Um, the story I'm going to tell, though, is we were in Baltimore on a book tour for some little press in Baltimore, a really cool press called Apathy Poets Press. And um, the guy who organized the tour had gotten the Maryland Institute of Art to fly Jack back and forth because otherwise he wouldn't be able to go. And Maryland Institute kind of, because they didn't know any better, put Jack on the same stage with Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And if you knew the two of them, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> and it was actually really funny. It was like two old pit bulls trying to kill each other up on the stage. Um, and we were about three days into the tour, and Tommy came up to me and he said, what the fuck is it with Jack and bathrooms? I said, oh, he doesn't like them. I don't know. And he said, well, yeah, I know, but does he have to piss on the fucking cop cars? I, he said, I don't care if he pisses on cop cars in principle, but he's our headliner. And if he goes to jail, I can't get him. I don't have any bail money. So could you talk to him, Dave? Like, Me? He can barely remember my name. What do I do? But I talked to him, and Jack was like, I can't show fucking cops. <laughs> Jack, this is not about cops. This is about money. My fucking money. <laughs> so I wasn't going to win on that. But we got a week into the tour, you know, and we were okay. He hadn't been arrested yet. And then we're walking down East House in New York and somebody says, where's Jack? And he was gone. And I ran back the way we come. Sure enough, there he was, hosing down in my PD cop car <laughs> while the cops were in the car. <laughs> so you know how the cop gets out of the car, kind of bang his stick on his hand, like, mm, I see what your stick does, let me show you what my stick does. And, Oh my God. Jack, he could do this. When, when he was belligerent, he looked a little bit like a raccoon. He would stick his nose on him. And so he kind of does that to the cop, and I grab him by the arm. I'm like, oh, geez, officer, I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I was supposed to watch you. Get away from me. <laughs> not right in the head. So, Grandpa, let's go. And the only thing that saved us was that Jack was like, what the fuck you call him, Grandpa? And he was more mad at me than he was at the cop, and so I was able to get him um, away. So that's, that's my story about Jack Michelin. Um, he, he was also really, told me, he was very sympathetic. I was a secretary and he would look at me like, no, how do you do that? And I'd say, I don't know. I know. So this is why I like this poem a little bit. It's called Poem to Tom McGrath. I know my friend is feeling blue tonight. I read his poem in some magazine, a sad poem about his youth, about the road, a wanderer's road, which started out in some small town out west. A gentleman, much older than myself, the fire of his youth long gone. He told me he believed in brotherhood and smiled from some damp dungeon of his heart, a sadness in his eyes of some long lost love. I was in my only rags, disillusioned, bitter, fire furnace of my mind. He scribbled a poem on a torn piece of paper, advice from one poet to another about a piece of flint to know the sun. He had been drinking heavy, working at some commercial job, which rips a poet's mind to shreds, which rips his Tom Hart bare, a sadness in his eyes of some long lost love. It was this act of love, given in the dark hours of the night, 
that makes life far richer than it is, than any awards won by men of arts and letters, given from one lost soul to another, given in the rare moments of our lives, a scribbled poem about a piece of flint and of the sun. by Jack, or I'm going to read one poem and then do something else. But <clears throat> let's read. I want to do this poem called Poet in the City. <clears throat> it is dusk, the light rose, O oh tower rising, O oh dreamers, O oh destiny, O oh wind in the stars, the gestures of old men and young children. The trains rock and roll across Brooklyn. I stand with the color of buildings and breathe deep air of cities. I sit on stone. I crouch and bow to my muse. Oh, violence of fear, instincts of wild dogs. I blow breath to salute the sun disappearing as the first stars crown a cripple and darkness the children of cities. O oh, poet beyond universities, O oh, livers, O oh, dark enemy of order, O oh, brother of torn poppies and pussy willows, O oh, sailor, O oh, poet, O oh, dog ragged and discarded, O oh, writers with dreams and fantasies, your brow crowned with diamonds, your image beyond skies and lost cities, Life comes with moans and whispering winds. I fly past centuries. This night is white with yellow flowers, dancing with dreams and lost birds. Oh. And this last thing is the last poem in the book. I hope you'll pick up, you'll, you'll get to take some books home. Um, they're also on, on Zeit, the Zeitgeist website. Uh, I'll leave some cards up there. That's also a great portrait in back of Jack. Oh, Debbie. oh yes, thank you. Debbie Vinograd, who's here, Yay. did this beautiful portrait of Jack. And you know, Debbie captured something yeah. of the sweetness of it, of the man, that, that was precious. So this next piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try in my... Jack was, as we all know, inimitable. But I'm going to try in my small way to channel his style in some way. And if you know this piece, I want you to sing along with me, okay? <clears throat> so this is called... <clears throat> this is called Rock Song. Oh, the dead stalk the corridors of airports. It's the dead that rule this world. It's the dead, it's the dead, it's the God we're dead. It's the dead that rule this world. It's the guys writing poems in the streets of this world. It's guys writing poems for us all. It's a sound that comes from deep in the heart. It sounds jumping out from the air. It's the dead, it's the dead, it's the golem dead. It's the dead that rule this world. Don't let it get you down. Don't let the fear bring you down. The hard rock sound. All of us are born to be free. Oh, the dead stalk the corridors of airports. It's the dead that rule this world. It's the dead, it's the dead, it's the God dead. It's the dead that rule this world. It's the face of a child that I see. It's the rays of the sun in the sky. It's the dogs chasing birds in the grass of this world. It's lovers that make this world free. Let's have a hand for Jack.
right, let's give it up for Bruce Isaacson. <laughs> William Taylor Jr., the editor, all the poets tonight, the friends of Jack. We really heard Jack tonight. Take, uh, we got Cocky Moon here, and uh, please take something home with you tonight. Um, this has been a great feast of poetry. Jack is smiling up there in heaven somewhere, or shouting down. Goddamn dead Jack. So thank you all. Stay in touch with the Beat Museum. We're always Thanks here. Thanks to the Beat Museum. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. We'll always be here. Thanks again. If you all pick up one chair, we got to get the.